Okay. So hi again. So basically, again, to just give you a little background on our project. So we're a group of high school girls that started this mental health initiative to talk about teen stress, something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And, and through this series, Teen Stories Told, we hope to just like tell like mental health through like teens themselves, like who knows the best. And we're so glad to have you today. Oh, thank you. Always, always a pleasure. Always an honor. Um, the platform itself is just so very much important to me. And mm -hmm. so to know that there are young women as such as your age in high school, it's always so important to recognize that it's a very important social cause. And there are very big factors that play along with someone's health, just like as if it were a physical health attribute. Thank you. We really appreciate you. We really That's appreciate fun. you. <laughs> All right. <Aww. laughs> My first question to you is, so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as the 2023 Miss San Antonio? Yes. Okay. So hello, everybody. My name is Wendy Araujo, and I am a San Antonio 2023. Um, so my mental health journey really started very fairly towards the age of seven, really. It really did. Um, unfortunately, I went through a time where I was sexually assaulted as a young child, Um the man that unfortunately did sexually assault me was a very wanted man um, in connections with um, with child endangerment. Um, from there, I never really knew growing up in a POC household, especially being Mexican, um, never knew that my mental health was slowly deteriorating as I was growing up. Rather, instead of me having a normal childhood and growing up to be very carefree, charismatic, and just very happy from what a child should regularly grow up to be, that was not my case growing up. And it really started to integrate itself in my life very negatively whenever I began in elementary. In elementary, I was severely bullied until the end of my high school career, which a lot of people don't really know unless people went to high school with me or, you know, very close friends. Um, to the point where in junior high, it became I became very suicidal. I first attempted my first suicide attempt at the age of 13 after, or before my years became a bit more physical of bullying. Um, from there, I just never knew what the terminology was, nor did I know the actual feelings. It was more rather just confusion than actually sitting there contemplating, well, this is the best way I can take away this pain. Later growing on into my more young adult years in my high school year still continued when I became a freshman and a sophomore. Later on, I was bullied and being in drill team really did, did a number on me, but it did also help me you know, grow up in the sense of I can do this. I'm am, I'm am a mature young woman. I can get through this and then go ahead and tell the next generation that story that I went through. And then going into college, it really made me realize, hey, something's really not right. And that's when I started knowing the terminology, started doing the research, started going through the backstory, why finding the triggers that really activated my anxiety, my depression that was later found out in therapy. Unfortunately, with, you know, the whole backstory for me, I tried to go see a, um, a psychiatrist. Uh, my parents were not documented at the time. Um, so they were not also able to afford it because of the healthcare system in the United States. That's a whole nother topic. Um, but with that, I was fortunate enough to really go through the phases of the motion of really starting to take a sense of caring for my mental health, because like that, without mental health, there is no health. That's where it starts. It starts inside before it can even start outside. And so for me, I've just advocated a lot, especially right when I lost my dad in January of 2020, we actually just not celebrated. That wouldn't be the right word. We just acknowledged his third year passing just a couple of days prior to today. And so it really, that time in my life, really, I lost him at 19 and currently as a 22 year old, it really made me think about the grief and really made me think about the anxiety and depression I was diagnosed with. Um, and so taking therapy really has been a very like that therapeutic form of me being able to cope with, you know, the schoolwork, um, the title work, everything that in my life that once 
younger Wendy couldn't handle to now adult Wendy has those tools to know what to do and how to recognize the actual attributes that are listed as anxiety, depression, or just severe high functioning depression, which is unfortunately something that I went through like that at a very young age. And to being an adult now, it's become like that. My life mission to really bring it across to as many platforms, as many stages as possible, whether that be in pageantry, whether that be in my personal life, as I've helped personal friends and family members um, seek out therapy or just question um, their health. Are they in really good standings to be making big life decisions? Because some of these decisions can be very life-changing, very impacting that some people might not be in the most clear head state of mind, clear head state of mind, and don't want them to later affect them in life. So to basically sum it all up, it's basically become like that, my life mission. And I very much thoroughly enjoy it. I've been very passionate about it. I actually just became an ambassador for NAMI Texas, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illnesses. I'm very honored to work with them and to help spread the word more thoroughly about mental health and why it's so important and how we can attribute more to our community and our society as a whole to prevent all these percentages and all these statistics on mental illnesses. And recently, you know, I was reading more and more to elevate my platform even more to see where I can contribute my knowledge, my my facts and everything. Um, and I saw that on our NAMI Texas page, we saw that 21% of adults in the US experience mental illnesses and 5.6 of that have experienced severe mental illnesses. That that's excuse me. That doesn't even include the the statistics on young people. I can only imagine in today's world as a Gen Zer myself, social media has evolved rather rapidly, and sometimes it's not all for the greatest. And bullying also happens on social media, and a lot of times, mental tolls take it. It takes a mental toll when you go through social media. And so it's also a very important factor on the topic, but that's just a little bit about my backstory where it all kind of really started. <laughs> that's, that's really inspiring. And I, sadly, mm -hmm. I feel as though a lot of people can relate to that somehow. So mm -hmm. given like this background, how do you think that um, having this title has affected you in a positive or mental way? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, so a little backstory into my journey into the Miss America organization. I am a very first new year comer, brand spanking new, has no idea what she's doing in this world, still kind of question it to this day, four months into the job. <laughs> but really, most of the time it took me, I competed in five locals. So with the Miss America journey, you compete in your local titles, which is to represent a city title. You then compete at your state level, which is for me, Miss Texas or Miss Oklahoma or any state you're in. And then from there, if you're one of the lucky, let's say 50 candidates or delegates, you'll go to Miss America and then you'll represent your state and potentially have that national platform. So that's where it all started was the platform. I was so interested in, you know, not being the sense of beauty queen because those have a lot of stigmatizations to it. I would have rather been a representative. I treat myself as a vessel and it's for me, the appearance, the anything that attributes to physical attributes are of low importance to me. And when I tell people I am simply just a vessel, I just go in and I just share my love and I share my knowledge for it. So with the title like that, it is a job and it is a tremendous job and honor to have it, especially having been named the 100th Miss San Antonio, which is a more monumental win for myself and for my community of San Antonio. So currently resigning in San Marcos for school, it's it's always a big commute going back and forth, but honestly wouldn't have it any other way. And sometimes like that with the commute, it sometimes takes a toll on me, you know, sitting on 35, sitting in traffic, thinking, what am I going to do afterwards? What am I going to eat? It's just those things that really get you through the day, really questioning, you know, and testing your faith almost and really thinking, what am I doing? So for me, it's positively infected, like impacted me a lot. I've seen a lot of 
my classmates personally come up to me right after I won in September of last year and just ask me, well, what do you plan to do? Can you believe it? Just with all these bombarding questions. And of course, I love to answer each and every one. And sometimes it's so overwhelming because that is the billion dollar question. What do you intend to do with this title? Just like anybody would. So for me, I, as soon as I had that crown and sash across my heart and above my head, well, I looked down and it didn't say Wendy Araujo. It said Miss San Antonio. So that was the first thing. What is San Antonio? What does San Antonio stand for? And what are my physical, what are my actual attributes that I can contribute to San Antonio's community? So I start there. So for me, it's just being very involved in the community, you know, spreading the word on my social initiative, which is it's okay to not be okay. And it and it focuses more on mental illnesses, advocacy, and well-being. And so as well as providing solutions and other alternatives besides therapy, if one can't afford it, one of my very big goals, you know, going back and looking at the big picture of my initiative would, would be an incredible opportunity to have partnered with NAMI Texas. So check. <laughs> so after that, I, I made it a, my own, you know, personal goals. And I actually have a checklist on my phone, funny enough. And it's all my Miss San Antonio 2023 goals, just for my service alone. And one of those goals is to like that work with NAMI to having to be able to be fortunate to sponsor scholarships for people who are in the community who aren't able to afford psychiatric evaluations or attend therapy sessions or find, let's say a fine art. For me, I am a dance major. So I find a lot of my time based on dancing. For me, it helps me portray a story even my story to anyone that I see when I perform. And like that, it doesn't have to necessarily be a sad story, happy story. It can be any story. You play any character you want. So I think with my platform, I enjoy doing it so much. I love including it in it that I feel like there are other hobbies and crafts and, you know, extracurriculars that I would, you know, enjoy doing that I know a lot of, a, a lot of other people would enjoy to do. So I want to be able to provide scholarships to be able for people to find their love into it, to mm -hmm. deter from the negative aspects and the thoughts of any, any and all mental illnesses. So this platform that was given to me is treated with respect and with dignity. And I go out every day trying to be the best person I can be to inspire others because I once aspired to be in those same shoes as the ones I'm in now. So I take everything that I know and I bring it back to the community times 10 in the most positive, loving way I can to influence others to, it's achievable. And you can, you can have this platform and you can really make an impact. And personally for me, whether it be on the local, state or national level, or even outside of pageantry, it's very important that in my own eyes, I can see that I really made an impact in young kids to older adults. It doesn't matter, mental illnesses don't discriminate. And so with this platform, when I was given that distinct honor, I vowed to do that for the year of my service, but even after to come. Awesome. So as we all know that mental health, and as you've been saying, mental health is a really important topic. So mm -hmm. we know that looking through your social media, you started a series called Mind Your Mental Health. So what mm -hmm. led you to start to that series? And why do you think that that's like an important topic to be self-aware about? Yeah, of course. So Mind Your Mental Health series really came from when I started to think about, well, what is mental health? Why is it so important to keep that, you know, intact and healthy? Just like that, as I've been saying, it's just like physical health. There is no health without mental health. A lot of people seem to not grasp the idea, not because they don't want to. It's just the lack of knowledge. So for me, I, I started this really to share stories. And on my social media, I included um, two of my crown sisters, which are Miss Dallas and Ariobo and Miss Capel, Sophia Miranda. 
And so with them, they we all kind of work with each other on our own platforms. We really elevate each other. And that's the whole purpose. So for me, with my mental health, mind your mental health, it really is that mind your mental health. It is so important to take care of yourself, not only physically, but mentally. And so like that, there's too many statistics out there in the world that really, it really is an eye opener to see how and why it affects so people, so many people each year. So for me, I ask them questions and I say, well, you know, introduce yourselves, let people know you're this wonderful, successful person, yet you still struggle with some things internally that people don't see on the outside day-to-day basis. Just because you may seem on the outside, you look okay, doesn't necessarily mean you're okay on the inside. And that doesn't discriminate race, gender, sex, ethnicity. It doesn't matter if you have such a big social media following. It also doesn't matter if you have a low social media following. We see this from ranging from, you know, the regular, the regular, you know, citizen like us to a celebrity. And my example, unfortunately, will be the beloved Chesley Christ, who was our previous Miss USA in the Miss Universe system. And so like that, you have no idea what a person is going through on a day-to-day basis. And that that initiative for that little project I had was to be was to say that to see how you can be, even if you're not successful, which I'm going to do quotation marks in, it doesn't matter. It need, it goes to show that even though you may, you may be this well-spoken, eloquent person, doesn't always mean that like that, you're okay. So my initiative with that was to reveal those questions and just to say, well, what do you do on a day-to-day basis? Like, what do you do when you know you're in that kind of rough patch in your brain that you just can't get out of. It's not as simple, I'm okay. I'm gonna go on about my day. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it can really affect your day-to-day living. And I ask people those sincere questions and I let them be as vulnerable as they would like to be. So anything that they have told me that they would not like to be revealed, they will mention it, um, you know, on their own accord. And so for that, it's the initiative of just to reveal, you know, I can do all these things, but I also have situations of my own and it really goes more in depth into what they do on a daily basis what they kind of do to alleviate that pain like that pain and the negative emotions associated with you know anxiety depression and just to name a few so that is a continuous project that I hope one day can turn with the right resources that it can turn into more webisodes and be more more intricate and more more out there for people to acknowledge, to see that, like that, it doesn't discriminate anyone and it it can include them next. And hopefully that's not the case. So as a strong 22 year old woman, how do you feel as though um, when it comes to stress and coping with stress, how has your coping mechanisms changed from when you were a teenager to now? Oh man, (laughs) that's a good question. Really, it really took... Whenever I lost my dad, and I'll start here, whenever I lost my dad at the age of 19, it really took a toll. I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do in the sense of there is no pamphlet that the hospitals or any funeral homes give you when someone passes away, especially someone as very close as your own dad. So for me, going through it, coping for me, it took several, several different types of mechanisms and, you know, objectives for myself and takeaways really to understand and learn how to really be able to cope and manage with all the stress and how to be able to really hone down on my abilities and tools and resources to not feel so discouraged or just feel so in my head a lot to be stuck in there. Um, So a lot of the times I started doing journaling, which is something I still do. I still do to this day and I thoroughly enjoy it. I'll go on Pinterest or I'll go on Google and I'll find like these cute um, journal topics or sometimes when I don't want a topic and I just want to write it out, 
I encourage people to write it out because sometimes it's better to just write on a notebook or even your notes app on your phone or just anything that you can get your hands on physically to write your brain, whatever is in your head that day away. Because a lot of times what I find is that I do this, especially when, before I go to bed. So I have a dedicated journal. I actually don't have it on hand with me, but, um, what I do is right when I'm feeling my most sleepiest is when I consider it my most vulnerable. So I go and I just write. And the thing is with these, it doesn't have to be cohesive. It, it can be incoherent. You don't have to make any sense. As long as you get all those thoughts, anything you did in the day, good, bad, write it on that book, close it, sleep. I found it's been the most effective for me because all my thoughts aren't just playing and playing and playing nonstop in my head before bed, which should be your most relaxing time of the entire day, more so night. So that's my most biggest thing that I've learned about myself is just going to cope with stress or just any, any attributes of my mental illnesses. I go in and I journal. Another thing is that being in my extracurricular, which is my major, which is dance. I go and I portray a story and I dance my worries away. Does my body hurt afterwards? Absolutely. But it's something that it, it make, takes away from the pain. It takes away from the distraction of the emotional feelings associated with it. Another thing is just like that, finding, finding a lot of extracurriculars that I was involved in. I was a band kid until from elementary, sixth grade, into freshman year of high school, right before the school year started. I was in choir in junior high into high school, then drill team. So for me, I like to be involved in a lot of things because Whereas someone could see it as, well, you're going to be really stressed. You're involved in a lot of things. Personally, for me, and I can't say this for everybody else, I like being involved in a lot of things because it gets my mind on its feet. And I find myself thinking much more faster, much more clear. And I'm able to contribute more because it's healthy organizations for me. It's a healthy mindset for me to be very involved to take away from the distractions. So for me, like that, I found different ways to really cope with the stress, the anxiety, the depression, the severe functioning depression I went through years ago. Sometimes it cripples up on me a little, it creeps up on me. <laughs> um, but most of the time it kind of differs. It just something that I see maybe on TikTok and be like, hmm, this looks interesting. I wanna try this. And it just varies day by day. Tomorrow, who knows? It could be crocheting. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. So my last question to you is, obviously, as a big mental health advocate, what do you? Uh, what is the biggest advice or like message that you would like to prevail um, when it comes to teens and struggling with mental health? Mm -hmm. So I'll say this, especially with my initiative, a lot of people see my social initiative title and they'll say well that's very cheesy but it's very much true it's okay to not be okay if I want any tech takeaways from this you know ranging from teens to younger kids to older adults it is so important to take care of your mental health and that doesn't necessarily mean going to get psychiatrically evaluated whereas it is important to know exactly the things you're going with take it take it as like this example you wouldn't go to the doctor when you have a broken leg but you're going in thinking you have a cough if you know something's wrong please speak it is okay to express your emotions your feelings and really be honest you can't ask for help if you're not very honest and it starts with you and you can keep this to yourself until you feel ready, but do it safely. I know when I was younger, I used to bottle up a lot of my emotions and a lot of feelings. That made me become suicidal. I would not like to see more statistics on suicide because of mental health. It is very, it is very disheartening to see the statistics on it. So my message would just be to that, reach out to someone. If you're in a situation where you don't find yourself being supported, NAMI Texas has amazing resources and they can be anonymous as well. Please reach out. I have a lot of the hotlines based on um, posted along in my Mind Your Mental Health series. 
And being an ambassador for them, I am actually making a collaboration with them in hopes that I create a school, a school lesson, a school lesson plan. So this will entitle me to go to elementaries, junior highs and high schools. Hopefully a high school for you guys maybe would be in the works. We'll see. Um, but really do take care of yourself like that. Like I've said this entire time for this interview, there is no help without mental health. So whether that be maybe picking up a book on wellness or maybe um, maybe a craft that you've never tried, something new, it gets you very much engaged. It uses a lot of your frontal lobe activity to really dedicate yourself into something. I find that for me, being involved in a lot of things really helps take a lot of those negative emotions away. So like that, find yourself, you know, investing in a journal, maybe writing out your feelings the minute you wake up and even the minute when you go to sleep or even pick up on some webinars. I know there are some, and when I say webinars, so they're web seminars that they talk about mental wellness, what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to practice it. You know, it could be taking time to be practicing your own self-care and self-care can look many different ways. Maybe you want to watch your favorite show or, or you want to catch up on a movie that everyone's been talking about. Get some takeout, make yourself some lunch, some dinner, eat some treats, something that makes you feel good about yourself. I would practice that very, very, very much. I definitely think it's very important to acknowledge that when something isn't right, whether that be physically, especially mentally, it's very important to go and find those resources. For me, and I also want, you know, anybody, this is just any and anybody, any and all basically, know that you are loved, you are so worthy. There is nothing in this world that you cannot do, you cannot achieve. Know that I'm here doing the work I am doing because someone believed in me. And I feel and I believe that I owe it back to not only children, to teens, to young adults, to senior citizens, or to anybody in the in-between. It's become a mission of mine to do it because like that, someone believed in me. And if anybody needs anybody, I believe in you. And know that your emotions are very powerful and it's not something to be ashamed of. So my takeaway is this, know that you are worthy. You can do very many great things in your life know that it is important not only to take care of your physical health, but also mental and know that there are resources for you. And whenever you're, whenever you do feel properly ready to disclose that information with family and friends, know that there is a rally of support right behind you. Know that I'm behind you. Even if you don't personally know me, or if you see me on social media, my doors are always open. My lines of communication, always open. I am there to have a lending ear, but I'm also there to help and provide resources. So I would like for more teens, especially like you guys for doing this incredible work with mental health, to know, to feel empowered, to know they can give back and they can bring a lot of good things into our community. So know that, and that would be my biggest takeaway. And just know that there are people out there for you that are gonna be with you every step of the way. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yes. Of course. I guess for Audrey too, it was really inspiring. Um, and I just, I can't wait to post this and for everyone to hear your story. Um, mm. Do you have anything else to say? Besides other than, you know, working with NAMI, you don't really have to be involved with a nonprofit organization or, you know, own your own or just work with any organizations, you can do the work yourself. As long as you are resourced, you know, eloquent on the, the data and everything, you can really make an impact. And sometimes it really started with myself. It really starts with yourself. I learned that through my own journey, going through my own mental stuff. Um, but really, it's just so important to share your story. I think that's really where the beauty of inspiration starts from. Because you can't really... And I won't say the word sell because sell isn't the right word. You can't really relate to someone if you don't know what they're going through. So for me, being able to talk to people and being out in the community, being able to relate to them, I understand. 
And so even though we've had different walks of life, that one thing is the thing that is our red knot. It's our, it's tying us back together. So I want people to know that there are resources. There are people, there are people you can make friends with and eventually friends become family. You really can talk to them and be vulnerable because like that, it's okay to not be okay. Just know the accountability for it to be able to seek out help so you can better your mental health. And in the long run, you'll feel much more better that you did because you won't have to be living inside your head like I once did because of those tools I've been giving in therapy. And I want people to take that as another takeaway is just, is just that. <laughs> thank you so much, Ms. Antonio. Yes, of course. Thank y'all so much for coming to this interview and everything. So we really appreciated your time and your story and everything. So yeah, is there anything you have to say, Audrey? Um, actually like two things. So would you want to take like a little picture for us for our Instagram real quick? Yes, of course. I was going to ask if I could do the same thing oh as God. well. <laughs> I was like, would this be wrong, like wrong to us? <laughs> okay. So everyone, it's like my hair's a little, a little bad. Sorry, you guys. You're, you're gorgeous. <laughs> oh, <I'll stop. laughs> okay. Okay, and um, I'll take one really quick so that way you guys can, can do what you guys need to do. I do have to say the minutes like we have like two more minutes.